These are the respiratory volumes that you're going to need to know. And we're going to talk about what each of these are. Why do you care? Because they are used to assess the respiratory status of your patients. Tidal volume, inspiratory and expiratory reserve volume, and residual volume. So let's look at the graph or the chart of what these are. You do need to know the amounts, the volumes, the actual numeric volumes of these. Tidal volume is going to be the amount that you breathe in or out when you are at rest. So as you sit there and listen to this video, you are breathing in about 500 milliliters and you are breathing out about 500 milliliters. The resi residual volume is about 1200 milliliters and that is the amount of gas or air that is always in your lungs. Now, why might you always need to have some gas in your lungs? Don't you need to make sure that you get rid of all of it when you expire? Think about that, and we'll discuss why that is important as we go forward. These are volumes for a male. Yes, I know. These are volumes for a male. We're also going to have to talk about the respiratory capacities, which will be a combination of the respiratory volumes. We'll go through each of those again, so fear not. Inspiratory, functional residual, vital capacity, and total lung capacity. So let's take a look, see about what each and every one of those are. I went over this before, right? So when you talk about functional residual capacity, about 2,400 milliliters for a guy, for a male, residual volume plus expiratory reserve volume. And when you're talking about expiratory reserve volume, you are talking about forced expiration. And when you talk about inspiratory capacity, you're talking about tidal volume and forced inspiration. Vital capacity is going to be the amount of air that you can breathe in and out, whether it be tidal volume and or forced inspiration or expiration. And total lung capacity is going to be all of the air in your respiratory tract, as indicated here. So tidal volume is the amount of air inhaled or exhaled with each breath, again, under resting conditions. Inspiratory reserve volume, as I said, is the amount of air that can be forcefully inhaled after a normal tidal volume inspiration. And remember that is after a normal tidal volume inspiration. Expiratory reserve volume, that is going to be the amount that you can forcefully exhale after normal tidal volume. And residual vo volume is going to be the amount of air that remains in the lungs after forced expiration. So the respiratory capacities. Total lung capacity is maximum amount of air contained in the lungs after maximum inspiratory efforts. So that's going to be tidal volume, inspiratory reserve, expiratory reserve, and residual volume. Vital capacity will be tidal volume, IRV, and ERV. Notice that residual volume is not included in that. Inspiratory capacity clearly is going to be the amount that you can breathe in. That's going to be tidal volume and inspiratory reserve volume. And functional residual capacity is going to be expiratory residual volume and, I'm um, sorry, expiratory reserve volume and residual volume. That is a summary of volumes for both males and females. And again, yes, you do need to know the volumes. The ones that I am most likely to ask are going to be the residual volumes and the tidal volumes. I can't remember ever writing a question about um, the respiratory, uh, the other respiratory volume numbers. You do need to know total lung capacity, generic total lung capacity for both males and females. Those would be good numbers to know. Now, there's also going to be dead space. What does that mean? The area 
areas in your lungs that make no contribution to gas exchange. And that basically, when you talk about anatomical dead space, is the air that is in passageways, which is about 150 milliliters. There may be alveolar dead space, and that's, a diff that's different from the anatomical dead space, because when you talk about alveolar dead space, you may have non-functional alveoli because they're collapsed or there's some sort of obstruction. When you talk about total dead space, clearly that makes sense that it's going to be both anatomical dead space and alveolar dead space. And that can vary tremendously depending on what respiratory conditions your patient may have. This just gives you a quick picture of the anatomical dead space. Again, no gas exchange, it's just air that is in the passageways and it shows you what areas are involved, the nose, the pharynx, the trachea, and the bronchi. This is, gives you another image of the um, dead space. This is physiological dead space. So again, it, anatomic dead space and is going to be the passageways. And if you have an alveolus that is not functioning properly, um, that will be the alveolar dead space. We use barometers to check pulmonary functions. And it's going to measure volumes and capacities. And there's a good short video there. Spirometry is going to be important because it can distinguish between a couple of different types of respiratory issues, obstructive pulmonary disease. So bronchitis, for example, if you have increased airway resistance, you might have increased total lung capacity. Um, etc. Restrictive disorders will reduce total lung capacity due to disease or fibrosis. So those numbers will decline. To measure the rate of gas movement, you may be checking forced vital capacity, which is going to be the amount of gas that you can forcibly expel after you take a, the deepest breath you possibly can. And forced expiratory resolve, uh, sorry, forced expiratory volume is the amount of gas that's going to be expelled during a specific time interval. You might have minute ventilation, which tells you about the amount of gas that is going to flow into or out of the respiratory tract in one minute. At rest, it's about six liters per minute. Normal with exercise is up to 200 liters a minute. And that really is only a rough estimate of the respiratory uh, efficiency. We do have some non-respiratory air movements, which may affect normal respiratory rhythm. And they occur in addition to your normal inspiration and expiration. And most are going to be triggered by some sort of a reflex. Some might be voluntary. What, is, what do they include? Yawning, coughing, sneezing, laughing, hiccuping, crying are all considered non-respiratory air movements. Short and sweet. Stay tuned for the next section. <laughs>